Okay. Well, um, as you know, here we have Bulletin Builder, um, which has been a product of the Department of Internet Ministries for several years now, and we are proud to offer an all-new and updated version. For those of you who were users of the old system, you will need to re-register. Um, and for those of you who are uh, brand new to the program, obviously you'll need to register as well. The, the accounts from the old system will not carry over into the new version because it's been completely rewritten from scratch, and we have a new model, uh, a new way of, of handling users. Whereas in the old system, uh, there was one user per parish. In this new version, we, have, um, we can have multiple users per parish. So if you want an account for the parish priest and the secretary, the pastoral assistant, maybe the parish council president, whoever contributes to the bulletin, they'll all have their own account and be able to contribute to the bulletin. And coming at, coming at it from another angle, if you have multiple parishes that you assist, um, or if you perhaps help out both the parish and the metropolis or the parish and another organization, uh, you have the ability of connecting to multiple parishes or multiple organizations within the system. And we'll see some of that in just a second. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to get started by registering for an account. And it's a simple form, um, all of the things that you'd expect to see in a form. What we have below is uh, um, what's called CAPTCHA. Um, hopefully many of you have seen CAPTCHA already. Uh, sometimes they're easy to read, sometimes they're a little bit more difficult, but it's a way to prevent um, spammers from registering for, an, for accounts. Uh, I'm going to agree to the terms of use. I have the opportunity to read them. Um, I've already read them fully, so I'm going to uh, just check off the box and click register. I get a notification saying um, that I've registered and that a confirmation email will be sent to my email address. So I'm now going to go into my email, and here I have the uh, confirmation. And I can read through it, and uh, here's a link to confirm my account. So I'm going to click on that link. and it says that the email is confirmed. So I'm going to enter in the, the email address and password that I had just uh, entered in a second ago. Click Login. And I'm brought now to a page that allows me to choose my parish. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use a combination of these three drop-downs. I can choose just by state, or I can choose by jurisdiction, and then by diocese or metropolis. Um, as you can see, we use the word diocese um, because the new version of Bulletin Builder allows for parishes from any jurisdiction underneath the Assembly of Bishops, anything that the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese is uh, in, with, with which they are in communion, um, uh, they're allowed to register. And so uh, parishes that are within dioceses and metropolises will be listed here. So I'll choose the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of America. I'll choose the Greek Orthodox Metropolis of Boston. And if I wanted, I could further refine by choosing Massachusetts. And I'll scroll down. And here's my parish. Not a real parish, but, um, but for today's demonstra demonstration, it will be. Uh, here we have St. Anna Greek Orthodox Church in Brookline. I'm going to click Join to, um, to say that I want to become a part of that parish. And as you can see here, it says, that a confirmation message has been sent to the appropriate person for approval. Now, for most of the requests, the, the, that, uh, that request will come to our department. Uh, our department um, is in charge of approving accounts by ensuring that the people that register for the accounts are who they say they are and uh, that they are authorized to use the system. Um, I'll click OK. Um, You'll notice this uh, notification here that a star next to a certain organization's name means that it's already active within the system. And I'll just go back to a listing to show you as an example. We have a number of parishes that are already using Bulletin Builder. Here we have Newburyport and Woburn, 
um, the Assembly of Bishops. Um, these are all parishes that are already using the system. Now, if someone registers uh, to join one of these parishes that already has an active user in it, the request will go to that user. So if the priest already has an account and the parish council president requests to join that same parish, the priest will then be notified of that request. Um, and the, that priest will have the ability to approve or deny the future request. Well, um, my request um, by the miracle of technology and my coworker here uh, has already been approved. Um, it's no longer in a pending state. Um, until an account is approved, it will remain in a pending state, but, um, but we've been approved um, uh, and uh, we can get going. Uh, I'm gonna log out and I'm gonna log back in one more time. And here we are brought to a welcome message, which uh, gives us a couple different options. One is to view uh, a tutorial video. I'm gonna click on that. And as you can see, it's part of the help section of Bulletin Builder. If you ever need any help, you can always go to the top navigation and click on the help link. Well, here's a video along with uh, some instructions. We could also go back to the main help section and read other tutorials, view other videos about, uh, about how to use Bulletin Builder. <clears throat> well, we're gonna go back to the main page and at any time uh, to return back to the, the main page, which we call the dashboard, you can click on the icon in the top left corner. And here we are brought back to the pop-up. And our other option is to use the quick start wizard. So here we are. Um, and the quick start wizard is a, is a um, introductory way to enter in some basic information about you and about the parish. So I'm gonna click go to get started. Here I have the um, option to edit any of the information that I entered uh, at the very beginning of the registration process. And I have also the ability to choose an avatar. And an avatar is just an image um, of yourself, a photo, um, perhaps a, a uh, cartoon depiction, whatever you, you, um, you'd like to represent yourself, you can choose that there. I'll then choose save and continue. I'm now brought to the friendly URL page. Now a friendly URL is a short um, bit of text that you can use um, in your website address for Bulletin Builder. And as you can see here, right now, I'm stuck with a really long string by default. Uh, you might see something like GOA-1508 um, or, or some, something else by default. Um, and you have the ability to change it. So I'm gonna change it to St. Anna, Brookline. And so what that means is that I can point my visitors from uh, the website, Facebook users, um, when I send out an email, whatever it is, I can say, to read the bulletin online, click here, and it'll take them to bulletinbuilder.org slash St. Anna Brookline. Um, you can have it be whatever you want as long as it's something that's unique and not used already by someone else. I'm gonna click Save and Continue. I'm then brought to the organization information. Uh, I could make an adjustment if I wanted, um, but everything looks okay there, so I'm gonna click Save and Continue. Uh, I now have the option to add a contact. And I can say that um, one of the contacts is gonna be the presiding priest, um, and I'm gonna say Father John Pappas. I have the option to add email address or phone. I'm gonna leave those blank and click Save. I could then enter in the name of the deacon. And click Save. And so on and so forth. And this list of contact information will show up in the various publishing formats. Um, so at the top of your printable bulletin, or on the side of your email or web bulletin. I'm gonna click Save and Continue. I now have the ability 
to enter in my service schedule. Now again, just like with the contacts, uh, you have the ability to, um, to have this certain information show up in your, um, in your printable and published bulletin formats. So I went into Microsoft Word because I already have this information saved, and I'm going to paste it in. Now, as you can see, there are a number of different paste options right here uh, in the second row of buttons. I'm going to choose the one with a W on it which is paste from Word. I get a pop-up, um, which you don't currently see, um, but the pop-up appears and I just paste what I've copied from Microsoft Word into it and I click insert. One of the, the nice things about Microsoft Word is that it's ubiquitous and, and it's um, used by so many people um, around the world. But one of the downsides is that sometimes the formatting within Microsoft Word does not play well with website formatting. And there's a lot of extra code that happens behind the scenes in Microsoft Word that ends up getting pasted in and sometimes will mess up with, uh, a website layout. And because we're working primarily with um, web formatting here, we want to use that paste from Word option in order to strip out any of the, the dangerous characters. And it's not dangerous in that it's going to hurt your system, but it's dangerous in that it it will um, affect how the information is displayed for users. So it's always a good idea and option to use Paste from Word. Well, I have the ability to do other formatting here. Whenever you see an editor like this, um, where you have a couple rows of buttons like this, um, it's what they call a WYSIWYG editor. What you see is what you get, sometimes also called an HTML editor. Um, and the buttons and the, the options are very similar to what you'd experience in a word processing um, program like Microsoft Word. I'm going to show you one other thing. Um, as you can see here at the bottom, um, we have uh, the letter P and then uh, the double arrow and strong. Those are HTML tags that show you what's happening with your text. The P stands for paragraph and the strong essentially means the bolded text here. Um, what we're going to do, um, what, what you see here in between each line is a paragraph break. Well, in also in web formatting, there's the difference between a paragraph break and a line break. So what we're going to do, we're going to remove the paragraph break, and I'm going to hold down the shift key and hit return. And what that does is give me a line break instead. And it, um, it's, a, it's a slight variation, but something uh, that's worth pointing out, and it might be something of interest to you. Well, I'm done with my service schedule for now, and I'm going to click Save and Continue. I'm now brought to uh, the page where I can choose my Tipicon, Calendar, Language, and Translation uh, preferences. Um, for those of you who are coming from the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese, obviously you will use the Tipicon of the Ecumenical Patriarchate and the new calendar. But we're expanding the system to allow for other jurisdictions to use it, those who may use a different Tipicon and those who might use the old calendar. So we give that as an option. We're then also given the option of languages. And so um, all of these settings are inherited from our parents. The, um, so for, for my parish, the parent organization will be the Metropolis of Boston. And for your particular parish, uh, your metropolis might have other settings uh, by default. Well, they have Greek listed first and then English. I'm going to switch that around because I would like to display the English readings and the English hymns first and then the Greek. I also have the option for Arabic if I wanted. And eventually we'll be offering more translations as well, um, more languages as well. And then we have the option on the right to choose the um, preference of English translations. So for the hymns, um, I might prefer Narthex Press and then Father Sarah from DDs and then maybe the Green Hymnal and then maybe Holy Transfiguration Monastery. And I can reorder those. And what the hymns section will do is look at what's available for that given week and try to provide for you the first option 
And if that is not available, it'll go to the second option and then the third option and so on and so forth. And so you have the ability to, um, to customize Bulletin Builder to be exactly what you want your parish to display. Once I'm done there, I click Save and Continue. I now have the ability to enter in the Apolitikian for my parish, and the patron saint of my parish is Saint Anna. And so I change the title, and then I'm going to copy and paste the Apolitikian, which is a nice short one. I'm going to choose the mode, which is whoops, mode two. And I'm going to click Save and Continue. And now finally, I'm brought to the publishing formats. For those of you who are familiar with the original Bolton Builder system, some of these formats are familiar to you. I'll describe them all. Um, uh, first is the print and PDF version, which is a brand new version for Bolton Builder. We're very excited to be able to offer this. Um, we're continually updating it. We're, we're refining it, making improvements based on your feedback. Um, one of the things about going from the web to print is that uh, every web browser is different, every computer is different, and the content every week will be different. So we, we've had a bit of a challenge um, that, that we've been happy to, um, to struggle with and, and come up with um, this PDF version, um, and, and we hope that it will suit you um, and your parish as well. Well, you have the option to choose three different sizes. Uh, in, in our surveys of parishes, we found that, that these sizes are the most common. If perhaps your parish is using a different size, you may be interested in, um, in using that within Bolton Builder. Just let us know, and we'll, we'll work on, on getting that size for you. Well, I'm going to choose the half-legal size. <clears throat> and then, as you can see, we have several options for headers for your parish uh, PDF bulletin. Um, by default, it's chosen the GOA logo, but I could choose any of these other images. I'm going to choose the image of Christ. <clears throat> if you want another image, eventually we're going to offer that, um, that you can have a customized image. We'll offer additional graphics to display here. But for now, you have the option of these six. We also have the option to add a blank first page. Um, I'm going to choose yes. Um, because my parish, for example, uses uh, a service from uh, Vestal Publishing, which are these um, really beautiful bulletin shells that we, we purchase for each week, and we print right to it. So on the front and back covers, uh, there's an icon and, and uh, a nice spiritual reflection. Uh, and so with, by adding this blank first page, we're able to then print right, to, um, right into the, the bulletin shells. Next, I'm going to choose the web format, and as we had chosen earlier with the friendly URL, it's going to publish to this location. I'm going to choose a basic two-column view. I have the ability to send to a listserv. If your parish uses a listserv, you may want to use this, where you enter in the listserv address and then the person that's authorized to send to that list. Uh, for now, I'm not going to check that off. I'm going to check off send as email, which I'll have just send directly to me. And I'm going to choose the basic one column with the sidebar. And I also have the ability to publish to a RTF um, document, which is compatible with Microsoft Word. And uh, what that will do, uh, if, if I didn't want to use the PDF version uh, up here, I could print to publish to the RTF version, which will allow me to um, uh, copy and paste into my own desktop publishing software uh, and lay out my bulletin on my own. You may want to use that as well. Uh, I'm going to, for the copyright information, show uh, as a summary at the end. And then I'm going to click Save and Continue. And there I am, all done. I'm going to click Go to get started. And here I am brought back to the dashboard. Now that I'm done with this pop-up, I'm going to check Do Not Show This Message Again and click Close. So here we are brought to the dashboard of Bulletin Builder. Uh, I'll describe a couple things, and then we'll uh, get into creating the bulletin. At the very top is the navigation. As you can see, the Organizations pull-down menu. It shows 
the parish that I'm connected with, which is St. Anna. If I was connected with multiple parishes, I could add another organization and others, other ones would be listed right here. Next, I have the Manage pull-down. I could be brought to the Bulletin Archive, which shows uh, a history of the last three months of bulletins. I have the ability to create a new bulletin here as well. Under Settings, I have a lot of the, the things that we just went through with the Quick Start Wizard under Personal Settings or Organization Settings or Bulletin Settings. Uh, there are other settings as well that you may want to customize. Um, uh, you're welcome to explore through there. We already saw the Help section. About just has some legal information and, and just general privacy uh, documents um, about um, what we do with Bulletin Builder. And then finally, the logout button. So now I'm going to scroll down. Uh, and in the middle of the dashboard is a summary of what's happening with my parish. So at the very bottom, I see the last 14 days of activity. Not much has happened yet because we've only uh, signed up just a few minutes ago. And then this gray area right above it shows me the upcoming bulletin. And uh, once we create a bulletin, we'll see uh, that filled in. For now, it, it remains blank. So we're going to jump right into creating a bulletin. I'm going to click the button that says Create Bulletin. I also could have gone up um, to the Manage panel and chosen Create a New Bulletin. From here, I can choose a publish date. By default, um, Bulletin Builder will populate the upcoming Sunday. And because the upcoming Sunday for us is February 2nd, it shows that. I could have chosen any other date. I can uh, just click, and it'll choose another date and update the fields. I could also scroll forward and backwards in the calendar. But for this instance, I'm going to choose February 2nd because I do want to create it for this upcoming Sunday. And uh, I also have the ability to modify the text. And I could have it be whatever I want it. Um, this is just informational for you. And because it happens to be the Feast of the Presentation, um, I'm going to add that in just so it's a, a better description for me. I now have three options. If I decide that I didn't want to do anything at all, I could click Cancel. <clears throat> um, if I've already been using Bulletin Builder for a while and I'm comfortable um, with the, the way that Bulletin Builder sets up my, my bulletin from the previous week, I can choose Quick Create. Uh, Bulletin Builder will always take your settings from the previous week, um, the, the number of sections you've chosen, the order of them, and other settings, and it will lay, lay out your new bulletin for you to match that. Um, and Quick Create jumps you right into the editing. Um, but for now, I'm just going to choose Next. Um, this process at first takes a few seconds because what Bulletin Builder does it goes out to the online chapel. It pulls in the, all of the feeds. Um, it downloads information from the metropolis and from the archdiocese to your bulletin. Um, so sometimes um, that could take up to 20 or 30 seconds. This time it happened to be fairly quick. <clears throat> and so here we are, a listing of our bulletin builder sections for, um, for this upcoming bulletin. And it lists out things that you'd expect to see, hymns of the day, saints and feasts, the gospel and epistle readings, wisdom of the fathers, news from the archdiocese, a message from Archbishop Demetrios, and then Metropolis of Boston news. Depending on your metropolis, you may see more or less information. Um, we're working with the metropolises to get them to populate their own sections. Um, so you may see a combination of, of these things. If you scroll down, you then have the ability to choose other sections to add in. For each of these buttons, there's a little pop-up that explains to you what they do. There are some things that are recognizable to you and some things that are brand new to the system. Um, so the single page section is just a simple page of text. It doesn't need to be a, an actual page in your published bulletin. It could just be a paragraph of text or two paragraphs of text. Um, we're going to do that. We're going to um, click that button, 
and we're going to add a welcome message. I'm going to give it a title and description, and then I'm going to click Save. And as you can see, it now adds it to the bottom of the list. Well, I want that welcome message to be at the top of my page. Oops. Let's try that again. So I'm going to drag it using the double arrows on the left side, and I dragged it to the top of my listing. Um, now, what, what we have here is a table of contents um, of your bulletin. You're not actually making changes to the readings or the hymns or the welcome message. You're just setting up the order and structure of your bulletin here. As you can see on the right, there are different action buttons. For all of them, you have the ability to delete the section based on the trash, uh, the, the trash can icon. Well, with this new section that we created, it looks like we have other options. So in addition to deleting it entirely, we have the ability to just remove it. That allows us to remove it temporarily from our bulletin and have it still available to us for a future date. I can edit it, and edit will bring up the same settings that we just had, the title and the description. Um, at this point, I could also add in an image. So what I'm going to do is choose from my computer um, a graphic to accompany Um, oh, I didn't actually, whoops, I didn't click Save. Saving is always a good thing to click, so let me try that again. I'll click Save, and there we go, and it says that the section has been updated. And I'll go back into Edit just so you can see, and so I've uploaded an image of our church there. Well, I want to add a couple other sections, so I'm going to click the News, RSS, and Messages section, and I'm going to say that this is Parish News. And for the description, I'm going to say News from St. Anna Parish. And I'm going to click Save. And I can move that upwards as well. I then have the ability to add in um, PDFs. So um, as I'm sure uh, happens in, in many parishes, you get requests from organizations within your parish, or from other parishes to, um, to advertise certain events. And the, the bulletin insert section is uh, exactly for that purpose. So you'll be able to easily upload a PDF of your upcoming festival or of a workshop series or, or um, you know, whatever it is that's happening in your parish or nearby parishes, you have the ability to upload the PDFs of those announcements there. I'm then going to add in a calendar. And I type in um, just a brief description. And I click Save. And like we had said earlier, this is just structural. We'll get into actually editing the content in just a minute. If I scroll down, I'll see that I have a couple other options. Well, under the Add Available Content, we have certain organizations that have been approved to share content directly to your parishes. Now, the Assembly of Canonical Orthodox Bishops of North and Central America is one of those organizations. Other organizations might be IOCC, OCMC, OCF, the pan-Orthodox agencies that have been approved um, by the Assembly of Bishops. Um, when they have information to share, it will show up in this section. I then have the ability to search for shared content. And if I type news, for example, and click search, I'll be able to see in the system what is available to me, what other parishes and other organizations have shared. And if I scroll down, I can see some of those things. Um, if, for example, my parish were near the church in Raleigh, Raleigh, North Carolina, I might want to add their parish news to my bulletin because we, we may have a relationship where we want to share each other's news. And I would have the ability to do that with the Add button. Well, for now, I'm just going to skip over that, but I wanted to show you that. 
I'm going to scroll up to the top and I'm going to click the create button because I'm now ready to create my bulletin and uh, get moving forward. So I click create and I'm brought now to my first section. If you see here on the left, we have that table of contents from the manage page. The quite a lengthy bulletin because we have a lot of sections um, and we'll go through all of those in just a second. If I decide that there's something that I didn't want, I can come back and click Manage Active Bulletin, which takes me back to the Table of Contents section. Or I can then return to my bulletin by clicking the Return to Your Bulletin section. So now I want to start by editing my welcome message. So just like we saw before, we have that HTML editor, and I'm going to paste in my text, my welcome message. I can make certain formatting uh, changes that I want. And then when I'm done, I click Save. I then click Next. And I can review the Hymns of the Day section. I see a listing of the hymns that are chosen for the day, the Resurrectional Apolitikian, the Apolitikian for the Presentation, the Seasonal Kontakion. And based on this, we can see that the calculation from our system is that the, the Apolitikian for the parish is not to be included for the day because of the major feast. Uh, if there's ever a mistake, if, if there's a, a miscalculation, we can go in and add a new hymn which will give us a pop-up and allow us to enter in a new hymn. Or if there's a mistake or a change that you'd like to make with a particular hymn that already is chosen, I can click the Edit button, and I have the ability perhaps to choose a different translation by unchecking one and checking off another. And then when I'm done, you'll see that the translation changed from North Express to Father Seraphim's translation. And you can also see the English and the Greek next to each, uh, uh, both available to you. And then click Next. I'm then brought to the Saints and Feasts page. I can reorder the listing. I can delete the Saints. Now I'm left with only the, the reading for the saint for uh, the, the feast for the presentation. And then I can scroll down and see a listing of upcoming saints. And by default, I see a listing of the saints for the next seven days. Um, and if I want it, I could choose one. I'm going to choose Barsanufius the Great and John of Gaza. And there it shows up um, right below selection. And then I can also search by text. So if I type John, I see a list of all the Johns in, in our database. Once I'm done, I click Next. I have the ability to, um, just like with the hymn section, make changes if for some reason there's an incorrect reading or your particular parish uh, follows uh, a slightly different um, set of readings based on local veneration for a particular saint. You may want to make a change or add a reading, adding at the top or at any of the individual readings, you can make a change. Once I'm done, I click Next. For any of these sections, in the top action bar, you'll see a question mark with the word help. That will always take you to the particular help article on whatever section you're, you're currently viewing. Um, here we have the Wisdom of the Fathers section, which has reading uh, quotes based on the Epistle and Gospel readings for that day. So uh, two were chosen by default. And I have the ability to search for other ones. And let's say I wanted to search for compassion. 
all of the readings, the, the, the quotes that were tagged with the keyword compassion show up. And if there's something that I want to add, I click add, and it gets added into my bulletin. Once I'm done, I click next. I now have the ability to add in parish news. So here you have a couple different options. The first option is to add RSS. If you don't know what RSS is, you can just ignore it. RSS stands for Really Simple Syndication. It's a way, if your parish website is set up, to automatically pull in the news from your parish website into Bulletin Builder. If you have that capability, uh, we'd be happy to talk with you more about it. If you don't, uh, you might want to ask your webmaster, the person who takes care of your website, if that's something that could be added in. One of the nice things about Bulletin Builder, especially with this new version, is that we've tried finding ways to eliminate duplicate work um, with other systems that you might be using. So RSS is one of those ways. If the news is already getting posted to your website, you can have it automatically pull in to Bulletin Builder. If you don't have that as an option, you can always add an individual item. So I'm going to click Add Item, and I'm going to call it um, you know, Goya Bake Sale. And I'm going to give it a date of February 16th. And I'm going to say something like, um, come support our Goya um, bake sale on February 16th as they raise funds their trip to Project Mexico. I'm going to click Save and add another. And I'm going to add one more announcement. I'm going to skip the display date this time. And I'll just type in a quick announcement. And you can make these as long or as short as you want. Um, once I'm done, I click Save and Close. And the two announcements that I typed in are now listed here. And I could have a long list or a short list. However many news items you, um, you want for your parish, you can list them all here, and so on and so forth. Um, I'm now going to click Next. And I'm brought to the news section from the Archdiocese. And here we have um, news um, that has gotten that has been pulled in automatically from the archdiocese. Um, if there's anything that I don't want to include in my bulletin, I just click the remove button. <clears throat> I'm going to just keep this one news item, and then I'm going to click next. I'm now brought to the message from Archbishop Demetrius. And here we have his encyclical for the Feast of the Three Hierarchs. And I'll, I'll keep that, and I'll click Next. I'm now brought to the Metropolis of Boston News. And here we have, um, again, same as with the Archdiocese, news from, um, from the Metropolis. And I'm going to keep all three of those news items. I'm going to scroll down to the Also Available section and take a look and see what else might be there. If there's anything within Also Available that I'd want to add in, all I have to do is click the Add button. Well, as you can see, some of the news that's here is um, well over a month old, which is why it hasn't been included automatically in our bulletin. So I'm going to click Next. I'm now brought to the Bulletin Inserts page, which we had described. I'm going to click Upload a Bulletin Insert. And from my computer, I'm going to choose a flyer for our imaginary Greek festival, which is coming up in May.
I could add in a description. The description is useful. The title and description are useful uh, both for yourself, for within the bulletin, but also for um, if you decide to share the content. And we'll see right now the ability to share is as easy as a couple clicks. So obviously the Greek Festival isn't something just for our community, but it's something that we want to advertise to everyone around us. So what I can do is click Share Item. And because I'm a parish, my only ability is to share across. For metropolises and the archdiocese, um, they also will have the ability to share down. And as you, could, as you saw from the archdiocese news and the message from Archbishop Demetrius, that, that content was shared down, which is why it appeared in your bulletin automatically. Well, we're going to share across for six weeks, um, which means that parishes near me will be able to search and find it. Um, and then I'm going to check off festival. Uh, it's also educational. Um, it's ethnic. Um, and it's also spiritual. So I'm going to click Share. Now the radio tower that represents the sharing feature now has the, the uh, radio waves uh, on the left and right of it, which means that the content is being shared. And then I also have the ability to search for a bulletin insert. So I'm going to search Family. And nothing came up, so I'm just going to um, move on from there. And I'm going to click Next. Uh, I'm now brought to my calendar page. Now the calendar section works with Google Calendar. If any of your parishes are using Google Calendar already, um, this is a great way to automatically pull in the readings, uh, the, the, the events and services that you have listed on your Google Calendar. Um, if you're not using Google Calendar, we encourage parishes to use it. It's a great and easy and free way um, to have a, an online calendar. So I'm going to click Add a uh, Google Calendar. And um, I'm going to give it a title. And I'm going to use this email address as my ID. If you're not familiar with how Google Calendar works, um, you could read up on it in our help section. Um, but every calendar within Google Calendar uses um, and has a corresponding email address. So I'm going to click Save and Close. And what I get um, automatically pulls in the upcoming services and events from my parishes. And what it does is it uses two months' worth by default um, in a listing view. So I see January and February um, for my uh, calendar. Eventually, we're going to add in additional features to allow for a grid calendar view to show only one week's worth or two weeks' worth and, and be able to customize this. But by default for now, we just have those options. So now um, I click Next one more time, and I'm brought to our preview page. And what we see here is a summary of all of the content that we just put together. And if I scroll down, I'll see every section in this listing with all of the changes that we made. <clears throat> and I'm going quickly, but, um, but this is all the content that, that, we've reviewed, that, that we've put together. In just a matter of minutes, um, we have assembled everything that we need for our bulletin. So now I'm going to scroll up to the top. And as you remember from our Quick Start Wizard, we chose the publishing formats that we wanted to use. Um, what we see here on the right-hand side is the ability to now publish to those formats. For any of the formats that we chose, we have a Go button. So here we have the PDF version, the web version, and the email version with Go buttons. And then we also have the ability to publish all. So if we wanted to publish just one of those, we could. Um, but because I'm ready to publish, I'm going um, to click Go. The system is going to process. And this is happening behind the scenes. It doesn't look like anything's happened. We'll wait a few seconds, and, um, and we'll check on it again. In the meantime, I'll describe um, just one other feature, which is new to Bulletin Builder. It's called Auto Publish. Right now, we have Auto Publish turned off. But 
um, we know that um, that people who work in the parishes, uh, the priest, the secretary, everyone's busy. We're doing uh, you know a dozen things at once, and sometimes we have time on a Monday afternoon to work on a on the bulletin, but we're not going to publish it until Friday morning. So what we can do is we can indeed work on it on Monday afternoon, and through auto publishing, we have the ability to set. Uh, our bulletin to publish automatically without us having to log in on that Friday morning. And so um, you may find that um, that feature um, worthwhile. Well, now that I've given it a few minutes, I'm going to click um, Refresh. And as you can see, I have these green check marks next to each of the formats. And what's happened is that the um, the system has gone through everything that it needs to do, and it's published in those particular formats. Well, the first one I want to look at is the web version. So I click on the link to, to view the, the web version, and here we are, a nice beautiful web format that you can take the web address, bulletinbuilder.org slash St. Anna Brookline, and link to it from your parish website. I scroll down and I see all of the different items that I've chosen for my parish bulletin. I'll then go into my email and I'll click the two new emails that have come in. And here we have the PDF version. And as you remember, we chose for the first page to be blank. And here we have our PDF version in a beautiful half-legal, eight and a half by seven size format with all of our content nicely displayed, ready to be printed. And then finally, we have our email format. So here we have, again, everything that we've chosen for our bulletin. In just a matter of minutes, we published to, we assembled our bulletin and published it in web, email, and print formats. 